With its longevity and unique design, the Scott Spark RC is one of the best known race bikes around. For 2022, Scott have pushed the design even further with an internal shock suspension layout and unusually for a cross-country race bike, 120mm of travel at both ends. Let us know what you think in the comments, but does the Spark RC seamlessly merge performance with looks? Keep watching to find out. Before I give you my thoughts on this bike, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell to know when we post a new video. Let's start by talking about that 120mm of travel. It's provided by a vertically mounted shock that's plugged into the bottom bracket shell area and extends up into the seat tube where a neat internal linkage drives it. Now, I'm sure you're wondering how you're gonna make adjustments if the shock is internal. There's an easily detachable door that sits in the belly of the bike, which exposes the air valve, rebound dial, and Scott's remote lockout twin lock cable system. The suspension is a linkage actuated single pivot with flexible stays adding to Scott's control of the suspension feel. The link that drives the shock is simply hidden in the seat tube. With no shock complicating the inside of the front triangle, a pair of bottle cages are easy to locate. Brake hoses are run neatly through a shrouded stem and into the headset for even cleaner lines. Setting up the spark was incredibly easy, even though the shock isn't visible. There's a small sag dial on the linkage, which is visible from the bike. Of course, a shock open to the elements is a touch easier, but don't let the hidden nature of this one put you off. Full maintenance is going to be a touch more tricky than on other bikes, thanks to the internal linkage and cable routing that goes through the headset though. The Spark RC's geometry is bang up to date. A 471 mm reach is as generous as the 66.5 degree head angle is slack. This is in the bike's slack setting, as Scott has fit the Spark with a 0.6 degree angle set for those wanting a steeper front end. The name of the bike gives away the highlight of the spec list, with SRAM's GX Access drivetrain impressing all who test it. The wireless electronic shifting is light in fill and incredibly dependable, so long as you charge the battery. On an XC bike, it simply makes life easier when your head is down and your heart is pounding. If you want to see our comprehensive review on SRAM's wireless group set, then there's a link in the description. Outside of this, the RockShox suspension is solid. Up front, there's a new SID fork with 35mm uppers fitted out in the cheaper Select build. Inside the frame is a custom nude shock built by RockShox. It has a trunning construction, the smaller dimensions helping the shock fit inside the frame. Both fork and shock are connected to Scott's twin lock on bar lockout levers, which allow toggling between open, traction and firm modes. In traction mode, travel is effectively limited to 80mm and the bike sits higher in its travel, aiding its climbing geometry. As you might expect, in-house brand Syncross's kit features heavily in the cockpit and wheels, with Maxxis's broad 2.4-inch Recon Race tyres blowing up large on the generously wide Silverton 2.0 30 wheels. At 11.93 kilos, it's not the lightest of bikes, though on paper it should be more than capable when the trail descends. What happens when you take the bike off the paper and onto the trails? Well, let's go and find out. So, what's the uh, spark like on the climbs? Well, first off, in open mode, it's really supple. So when you stand up on the pedals, it does bob around a little bit more than you might think for an XC race bike. But if you push the little twin lock on the lever here, it goes into traction mode. That's got 80 mil of travel, tightens everything up. Oh, there we go, tightens everything up uh, and makes it pedal a lot better. I said if you're in open mode on a really loose technical climb there is so much grip on offer. Rolling resistance on the recon racers is really low so the tread's not very deep, doesn't dig in and that helps it roll fast on smoother sections. However, I'm more surprised at how much grip they get. On this bike I'm running about 20 psi which is kind of below what you'd expect uh, on an XC race bike perhaps and that's thanks to having 2.4 inch wide tyres on 30mm rims so you can get away with those slightly low pressures and as I say combine that with the suspension that has loads of grip there's very little excuse on a steep technical loose climb in terms of shape it's pretty good for climbing so the seat angle it's fairly steep for an XC bike, get your hips 
really nice the over the crank so it doesn't feel like you're pushing forward and over on the pedals so it's comfortable on long climbs there's also ample room in the cockpit so never really feel stretched out now the access shifting from SRAM I think everyone who's tested it thinks it's awesome and it is the action is really light it's really accurate so you don't really have to worry about what's going on you're not sort of checking how much you're pushing the lever make sure it's clicked through or if you do sort of soft pedal for a technical section and you want to drop or add a few gears you're not sort of second guessing yourself and one of the things I have noticed about the Spark is that even though the BB height is pretty average for an XC bike I found myself clipping pedals a little bit more often than I might expect um, on sort of technical rocky steppy climbs and I think that's because there's a bit more travel and a 175mm crank now one issue I have noticed is that I'm not convinced laterally the frames are stiff as some others so when you get to a tight corner like this you might need to put a pedal stroke in it feels like the whole chassis just twists a little bit under power it's not a huge issue and it can help sort of twang you out of a corner but I think that adds to maybe a slight lack of zip when you're really pushing on even out of the saddle so on a smoother climb like this traction mode's good makes the bike more reactive shorter travel it's not soaking up quite so much of my pedal inputs into a corner like this and there's that twang as you put the power down through the corner there so through the trees the jump which is pretty good it is quite you know relatively long and slack but you can really hustle it through the trees through little corners it's really fun out through there yeah it's relatively active there's just enough grip with the tyres to really get through smack up a few gears and out into the open and here it's quite fast kind of pumpy in places and I say it just when you want to pump it doesn't quite have that real stable platform that you want it gets into that mid stroke a little bit too easy maybe so you end up just pushing down later into the stroke than you might have originally wanted obviously traction mode firms that up but then you lose 40 mil travel so this is where that extra 20 mil of travel really starts to make a difference it's pretty well controlled the fork at the front is great the sit is a really nice fork and yet it's got the simpler select damper but that's okay it feels pretty good and those wide tyres again are nice and supple so it does back through to later in the mid stroke on a drop like that but it's not too bad it definitely has progression towards the end of its stroke so you're not getting blown off off your ankles now head angles fairly slight reach is reasonably long tires are nice grippy and confident and there's good support from the fork so the fact that i've still got a saddle on my backside isn't the worst thing in the world obviously getting a, a drop of seat post lever on there is kind of tricky you need a, a vertical one or a triple lever cockpit and everything yeah pretty good no complaints there maybe the bar could be a touch wider and obviously having that saddle right at the backside can be a bit interesting on some descents but it's not the end of the world The pickup from the rear hub isn't amazing and there is a bit of a plank when you engage the pedals Ooh, wasn't quite the intended route got the sun in my eyes now but yeah, overall no complaints now accessing the shock is fairly easy through the door in the bottom and that gives you the control of you know the compression the air pressure and access to the twin locks cables it's actually a lot easier than you might think so again no real complaints there it's a nicely put together package some nice bits of spec on there um, so yeah well done well done Scott 
So to sum it up, I think it's an XC bike that really suits more technical race courses. The suspension is soft and supple, loads of grip, plenty of control, and it really works well on more technical descents. The geometry and the tyres working together to give plenty of confidence. If you're going to race it on smoother, faster courses, maybe less technical ones, pop a bit more air in the shock and in the fork just to get that little bit more reactivity out of it when you're putting the power down. Scott's obviously going to do really well with this bike. Well, it shouldn't be a surprise that adding 20 mil of travel at either end, as well as a stout fork, wide rims and tyres, leads to a bike that's dominant on the descents. Rough and rooty single tracks are dispatched with composure and control, not befitting an XC race bike. Yes, a dropper post and wider bars would aid things further, but the spark barely needs them. It's not all rosy though. I'm not convinced the chassis is laterally as stiff as it could be. Noticeable on tight uphill corners where a squeeze of the throttle is needed or when really pushing through a bermed corner. Likewise, a touch more mid-stroke support would go down well on more pumpy trails. It gets to the lower reaches of its mid before more reactive XC bikes would and certainly has less zing than the most aggressive XC bikes in its class. Of the XC bike I've tested recently, the Spark is the easiest to transfer over to if you're used to longer travel rigs. It has much more trail and enduro feeling suspension, so shouldn't feel too odd. With the addition of a dropper post and perhaps a second set of tyres, it'd make an excellent downcountry mountain bike. Though you'd have to check on dropper length as a 490mm seat tube is long and you'd need a vertically mounted dropper remote thanks to the twin locks position on the bars. Those are my thoughts, but what do you think of the Spark RC? Is integration the way forward? Make your voices heard in the comments. If you like this video, then give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.